Named after Heinrich Gustav Magnus, who discovered the concept in 1852 while studying bullets and their motion, the basic concept behind the Magnus effect is pretty simple. A ball or cylindrical object moves through the air while spinning. The magic happens as the spin of the ball starts to interact with the oncoming air. On the right side of the ball, the air and the surface of the ball are moving in the same direction, while on the left side of the ball, the air and the surface of the ball move in the opposite direction. On the left side, the opposite directions of airflow and ball rotation cause the flow to separate, creating a dead zone with no interaction. However, on the right side, the rotation of the ball grips the air that's flowing in the same direction and forces it around the bottom of the ball, creating a force to the left. Because of Newton's third law, since the ball is pulling the air towards the left, the air must create a resultant force pulling the ball to the right, which causes the ball itself to move to the right. Because the idea behind the Magnus effect intrigued us so much, we decided to prove it ourselves. We made a floating cup contraption to show the Magnus effect. In the experiment, once the rubber band was released, the Magnus effect caused the cups to float in the air as they continued spinning. In the future, the Magnus effect can be used to increase the efficiency of the rotors in ships and airplanes. Here is an example of a ship. The Flettner rotors on the ship, which are the cylinder objects, help the ship propel forward more efficiently using the Magnus effect. This causes the ship to use less diesel. If we can get more machines to incorporate the Magnus effect, we could save resources.